Catherine, how are you, Keith? Doing good. Oops. You're very welcome to Ireland. Thank you. Come on in, come on in and relax for a while. So, Willie, I heard you're a matchmaker. What is, what is that? What is being a matchmaker? Well, I suppose matchmaking is, in Ireland, it's, it's a tradition. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of a very old tradition that we'll say when a boy would arrive at a stage where he'd feel like getting married or maybe where it might be suitable for him to get married, or if a girl decided that she would like to get married, that they would approach a matchmaker to find a partner for them. And it was a lovely, gentle way of people finding homes and finding happiness and finding love. And the matchmaker would be very busy. Now, my father, I'd be a third generation matchmaker. My father was quite busy in his time. My grandfather would be exceptionally busy. Do you think there are more women than men that contact you, or...? It's almost a little strange that it's all men that are living in the West. Now, there's, there's basically, it is said, that there's about 29 and a half fellas to every woman west of the Shannon. And that women who come on holidays, they'd be shocked at the amount of attention they get. Yeah. When they come into a pub, they just can't believe the amount. They're really being adored, like, you know, by lovely Irish men that are maybe sometimes 20 years younger than them. Willie had a very interesting book that he started with his grandfather. It's a very thick book that looked very old with hundreds of names and pictures. Really, so can you explain exactly what is in this book? Like, for example, this picture and this letter here of those, all these beautiful girls. Yeah, they are very beautiful girls, no? And they'd be kind of oriental kind of girls, which is lovely. And of course, in Ireland now, again, you know, that the Irish maid would be just shocked how, how nice these girls are to them. Some of these women have came now and they just, every aspect of their life is, is about sweetness, like, you know. I mean, they got letters. Some of these guys now lived in very remote places, and they, the only letters they might often have got would be kind of bills and, and stuff. But they had these, they got these lovely letters, and they were taken with, you know, sometimes big lips on the letters and things. They were so proud of them, and sometimes a little bit embarrassed over them. So they are looking for partners? They are looking, they were looking for husbands? They were actually looking for husbands now. How do people outside Western Ireland knows about you. We are um, advertised and, you know, we say through the, the matchmaking and horse riding in, in, in the internet. Mm -hmm. And a good lot of it comes from that. So really, how successful are you in, in matching souls? I would say quite successful, you know, and it has slowed down, but we'll say in the beginning when I started this, and I was even sometimes when I think about it, it was almost a little scary. Almost out of 100% of introductions, almost 100% would get married. That's awesome. But now we'll say it is completely the opposite now. Women now will say have got quite independent. Mm -hmm. you now a lot of them would have their own house, that have their own care and that have a very good salary. And they're not looking for a home or they're not looking for a provider any longer. Now we'll say probably the percentage of people who would actually go to the altar would be about Maybe, I think recently I'd done some kind of little survey about maybe 23%, which isn't bad, like, you know. Still pretty good. Willie has an office in his home, packed with books and boxes, with lots of names and phone numbers written all over the wall. People would ring me maybe at 2 o'clock in the morning, and yeah. I, I said, any time they ring, I don't mind. I might mm. be in bed, and they'd say, wow. Willie, I, I'm living here alone. Can you find me a wife? Can you find me some nice woman to share my life with? I, I'd have a list here now, we'll say, that I'd be currently working with, we'll say, you know, that it'd be without having to look through my files. And I'd just say, well, there's a lovely girl there now, her name, we'll say, is Dane. I know that if I let them go without giving them some hope or somebody to get in contact with, they might just go away and forget about the idea again. 